Welcome back, guys. I wanted to put out a quick video. I just got back from the Chicago Sports Spectacular. This is the spring show. There's going to be two shows this year, one in March and then one again in November. Their summer show was actually going to take place in Detroit, so it's going to be a Detroit show, which will be different. Uh, but it's the same promoters. So the show is held at the Donald E. Stevens Convention Center, which is where it's held each and every time I've been in attendance at it. And it's also the same place where the National Sports Card Convention is held every other year, including this, this past summer. And it'll be there again next summer. So uh, I wanted to just give a brief recap and wanted to show you everything that I was able to pick up at the show. I wanted to uh, just kind of share my thoughts. Uh, first of all, before I go into that though, I was anticipating that SGC would be at the show because I was actually in communication with an employee. I actually like had messaged them a week ago saying, are you going to be there? So I could do a take home submission. So I was preparing an order and I brought it to the show and I talked about it last week during my video and preparing for the show and they weren't there. Uh, so I've been in communication with the um, person that I talked to the previous week. His name is Brent. So I've been in communication with him to kind of see uh, what, what, what can we do about that just because I was expecting that. Uh, I'm not sure about other people's preferences, but my preferences tend to be to want to take these things in myself and deliver the cards by hand, as opposed to taking the risk that it might be lost in the mail. I rather SGC take responsibility for the cards and by handing them to them in person. And if they happen to not get back to their facility or whatever, they're going to be personally responsible for it, as opposed to like trying to you know collect the insurance with the United States Postal Service or trying to track down the package in the United States Postal Service. So anyway, I'll keep you updated, see how that goes. I mean, there's uh, customer service is so wonderful. I think they might be willing to kind of help me out a little bit on this. Um, my first preference might be just to kind of cancel it, but if they want to be able to offer something else to that, uh, that would be helpful. So we'll see how it goes and I'm hoping to be able to kind of report back something pretty positive. Um, hopefully it's another like glowing recommendation for SGC. I'm sure it was just kind of an oversight for the show and not something that you would kind of expect ongoing. All right. So I also wanted to share with you. Um, so I went to the show today, uh, this afternoon. So this is the first of three days and I didn't get to the entirety of the show. So I was able to walk around all of it. Um, when I was looking for the SGC booth before I learned that they weren't there, um, I didn't get a chance to look at all of the tables. Um, and it seemed like it was a little bit more spread out than it had been in the fall show. I think they got a little bit more space, so they were able to expand, which was good. Um, but I wasn't able to get to all the tables. Uh, and when I was starting to purchase things, I started in the back this time. Usually I start in the front and work my way to the back. And by the time I get to the back, I'm usually out of cash. Uh, so I decided to reverse it this time because sometimes I find that there's some good deals in the back. Um, but you just don't get a chance to get to them. Um, at least I don't because I purchased stuff already throughout the show leading into it. Um, so I started in the back this time and I didn't only got through about a fifth of the tables uh, before I was kind of done for the day. Um, after that, I started talking to a lot of the dealers and had some wonderful conversations around vintage topics and items. Looks at some really cool photographs um, that are type one photographs of like Jackie Robinson and things. And the guy that was selling them is obviously a big Jackie Robinson collector. So it was just fun kind of having conversations with all of the dealers throughout the show, many of which are actually collectors themselves. One was trying to put together a 1959 top set that was all PSA and SGC sevens and eights and above. And then also another one just told me about just recently completing the 1933 Gaudi set, which was a project he started back in the 1930s. I'm not in the 30s and 1970s when he inherited his father cards uh, in the early 70s. So that was really kind of an interesting story, kind of hearing about his journey, trying to complete that set for the last 50 years. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you what I picked up. I have quite a big stack here of some things. They're all set related for the most part, of uh, both graded cards and also uh, ungraded cards that are part of my sets. So I'm happy to share this with you in just a minute. Okay, I'm going to start with some oversized items I was able to pick up at the show. So uh, three of which I purchased from the same dealer. This dealer had uh, vintage items from the 30s, actually from the 1910s all the way through the 1970s. And uh, I talked to him for at length when he was talking to me about purchasing some cards from the 1880s and 90s. Uh, he was telling me about that story and also of a current purchase that he's hoping to be able to complete that has to deal with some 1933 Gaudi cards uh, and also T2 of 6 cards. 
Um, but he had a box of like oversized vintage cards and they were kind of priced to move. And after a conversation, he was able to even give me a more of a deep discount on it. So I just picked up some ones I thought were kind of fun from sets that I enjoyed. Uh, this one's missing its tab, but this is a 1952 Robin Roberts. I'm sorry, 1954 Robin Roberts. Obviously, it has his 53 stats on here. Um, so it, it's, it's the same image across three cards, but sometimes the backgrounds are a little bit different on there, and then the write-up about the player is a little bit different, and the promotional items are a little different sometimes on the back. Um, but this one looked really good shape. It was just missing the tab, obviously, but otherwise it was a really sharp-looking item, and hey, if you can get it for less than $10, like, why wouldn't you do that? So that was Robin Roberts. And then he also had a, a collection of Gaudi wide pens um, from 1936, which I've kind of shown on the channel before. So I ended up picking a couple of other ones. I got Schoolboy Row from the Detroit Tigers. So I got that added in. And this one I had to get just because it was a beautiful image of John Whitehead. Uh, less about the player himself, but just look at this wonderful uniform from the White Sox in the 1930s. It's one of my favorite designs of the White Sox uniforms. Um, and this is just like a beautiful image that kind of captures it. So I'm really happy to be able to pick up this one. Uh, so now I have like three cards out of this. And just as a reminder, this is also where you can get some early Joe DiMaggio cards from his rookie season. Uh, from my understanding that these were mail-in items um, from the Gaudi card set. So picked those up. And one other oversized item I picked up in a transaction for a couple graded cards, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but it was my first exhibit card. And of course, I probably, this will make sense, the first exhibit I, card I picked up is probably my favorite player from this era. And this was from the 1947 to 1962 or three um, exhibit cards. And it is Stan the Man Usual. It was just price to go, man. Um, and I was able to even get it a little bit cheaper than that because I put it in part of a larger order. So we'll add Stan to the background here. This just kind of goes great with my growing Stan Usual personal collection. All right, so before I get into other items I picked up today, I did have some stuff that arrived in the mail just yesterday. Um, so this was actually part of, I purchased one card and then I added a few things other in there. We'll start with a few things that I added in here and they're both Mark Burley cards. So this is the Diamond Anniversary card from 2011 with Mark Burley. And then there's also an Upper Deck card from, I believe it's from 2006. It's a patch card numbered out of 150. So those are pretty cheap. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about the sneeze there. Um, you can say bless you in the comments if you choose to. But the main purchase of that one was the 19, or the 2001 Topps Gold Parallel of Ricky Henderson of the Golden Moments card. This was a card that was in Series 2 of the 2001 set. And this is actually the last Hall of Fame player I needed for my project. I have a couple others coming this coming week. And then I'm going to be able to do my final presentation of my 2001 Topps Gold Parallels. So stay tuned for that one. I'm looking forward to be able to do that video very soon, as soon as the last few cards come in. All right, so let's talk now about the loose cards I picked up, starting with, let's start with 1948 Bowman. So now I'm down to just five, five 1948 Bowman cards left. Two Hall of Famers are in there, uh, Red Shandies and Yogi Berra, and then Bobby Thompson I still need. But man, I made a lot of progress today. Starting with Herman Weheimer, I believe that's how you say his name, from the Cincinnati Reds, card number 46. Look forward to reading about these guys and learning about them. We got Johnny Warstock. If I, someone else knows how to say his name, please add it to the comments. Also from the Cincinnati Reds. Bruce Edwards from the Brooklyn Dodgers. Rex Barney, also from the Brooklyn Dodgers. Augie Galan from the Cincinnati Reds. Little Augie there. Clint Hartung from the New York Giants. Johnny Singh from the Boston Braves at this point. So now I got Spawn and Sane, so let's pray for rain. And then we got the whip, Ewell Blackwell, card number two in the set. 
So we got eight of them and we're down to just five cards. So hopefully we'll get, maybe even next month, I'll get a couple more cards from that set. We'll just get it down to the last three bigger ones that I need. Uh, now we'll do some 53 Bowmans, starting with Jim Bride, Bridewiser from the New York Yankees. Backup infielder, backing up Rizzuto and probably uh, Billy Martin at the time. Fred Hutchinson from the Detroit Tigers. Ned Garver, also a Detroit Tiger. Bob Porterfield from the Washington Senators. And Joe Gargiola from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Grew up on the same childhood block as Yogi Berra. All right, so now on to the graded cards. I did want to mention I'm actually going to be at the show tomorrow, too. I'm going to be getting an autograph from Jermaine Dye, and I might pick up maybe another autograph from one of the other players, but we'll see. Um, but I'm having Jermaine Dye sign the 2005 World Series ball, because he was the 2005 World Series MVP for the White Sox. So I'm looking forward to that, and I'll maybe take a few more pictures that day, too, and maybe share... Uh, but that's the day I'm going to be able to kind of meet up with some of my friends. All right, so I got two more graded cards from the 53 Bowman set. These are commons, uh, but these were priced to move. So I'm like, yes, please, I'll take those all day long. Uh, starting with Bobby Morgan from the Boston. I'm sorry, not Boston. My God, must be late tonight. Brooklyn Dodgers. It's an infielder for them. And then we have Bobby Adams from the Cincinnati Reds. I'm going to put these up over here. Got the bit graded cards in the background here. All right. Looking good, looking good. All right, I'm going to add two more here. I'm going to slowly replace the cards that you see before you here with four cards I was able to acquire from the Diamond Star set. What an exciting acquisition to be able to pick up these four items. Um, so this will actually bring me to 42 cards in the set, 42 unique cards. Um, so I'm getting closer to, um, I'm over a third of it now. So I'm trying to get closer to that number of trying to get to 50 for the year. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, if I can get to 50 for the year, that's more than half of the set if you don't include the reprinted cards that are in that final series that are pricey. Uh, but if you do include those, as most people do, um, to make it a complete set, then I'm farther off and financially farther off because they're much more expensive. All right, so the first and last card I'm going to show you I got from the same dealer. I was able to put the Stan Usual card in there with it for a few extra bucks. Um, starting, the first one I got was a Bill Terry. This is my very first Bill Terry card. Um, it's seen better days. It's got a little staining on there, some creasing. Uh, the corners are rounded with a little bit of paper loss, um, but at the price I was able to acquire it for, I was very happy with it. This is a 1935 edition of the card. It's card number 14. So we got Bill Terry over here. Just a cool little image of him, right? I think it's one of the cooler images. All right, talking about cool images, we have the Ford of Flash. Frankie Frisch with the Cardinals, I believe, in this image. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's when he was playing for St. Louis. Yep. Also former New York Giant great. Really excited to have this one. This is card number 17. We've got Kai Kai Kyler. And PSA 4. He is a Chicago Cub, if I'm not mistaken. I should know that, but I believe that's where he was. Oh, it says he's at the Reds here at this point. But I think he also played for the Cubs, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, he played across both teams. It mentions him being with the Reds at this point. And this is from 1936. It's a 1936 edition of the card. Let's move the Bowman. And then my final one, another Hall of Famer. So these are all Hall of Fame players. Really excited about that um, is 
Bucky Harris. How cool is that? In a 3.5, and this is from 1935. This is when he was a playing with Washington, where he was the boy manager. There we go. Bucky Harris. And that is what I got for you guys. Um, I'll be, in, be at the show tomorrow, and uh, I will tell you a little bit about that experience in a future video. Have a wonderful evening, and I hope you get a chance to get out to the show if you are local. And uh, hopefully I'll maybe see you guys tomorrow. So have a great one.